China, the world's second biggest economy, may be slowing down further. Latest data points at a further slowdown in manufacturing. For a pulse check on the Chinese economy, Bloomberg Stephen Engel now joins us from Beijing. Stephen, it's just getting worse, isn't it? Harsha, we got more evidence of China's slowing economy today with the uh, HSBC Flash PMI, our Purchasing Managers Index, a preliminary gauge of August manufacturing sentiment in China. And it again shows a deeper contraction in the manufacturing sector in China. Also out this morning, the Conference Board Leading Economic Index increased a modest 0.7 percent in July, reflecting slight improvement in industrial production, retail sales and electricity production. But... Other leading indicators such as property, exports and consumer sentiment, keys to the economy, they remained weak through July. This follows July's dismal trade numbers when exports collapsed to just 1 percent growth. New lending in July also was below forecast. The data so far is pointing towards a possible seventh consecutive quarter of decelerating GDP growth in this current third quarter. Now, there's speculation, increased speculation of possible further monetary easing after the central bank in June and July cut interest rates twice within a month, but they've left reserve ratio requirements at banks unchanged since mid-May, perhaps uh, due to concern increased money uh, supply could stoke inflation and asset bubbles. But the central bank governor, Zhou Xiaojuan, just last night told reporters that adjustments to interest rates and or triple R can't be ruled out at this time. But again, I bring up policymakers have a big dilemma. How do you stimulate growth without stoking inflation? And a big part of the economy is property. And the uh, premier in waiting, Lee Kuchong, has again called on local governments to continue their property market tightening. Harsha, back over to you. Stephen Engel, many thanks for joining us uh, with those details. That was Stephen Engel, our reporter from Beijing. Well, as Stephen was just uh, mentioning, the latest data uh, reveals that China's manufacturing may fall at a faster pace in August. Uh, for more on this, we are now joined by Leif uh, Eskesen, Chief Economist for Indian ASEAN uh, from HSBC Global Research. And Leif joins us from Singapore. Many thanks for joining us, Leif. You know, the HSBC Market Economics uh, uh, Purchasing Managers Index, that's the PMI Index, reveals a ro lower reading for August. And I understand this, this is just a preliminary reading. What is the inference that you're drawing from this and what are the reasons behind this fall in manufacturing? Yes, uh, the number came out uh, at the low end and this is the weakest uh, headline reading for the PMI flash reading that we've seen for, for about nine months. The key reason for uh, the easing uh, in the PMI reading was uh, export orders. Uh, export orders in terms of uh, the reading for the PMI there fell to the lowest level we've seen uh, since uh, basically the, the onset of the global uh, financial crisis on early 2009. Um, so export orders remain weak, uh, final demand abroad remains weak basically. So that's dragging down uh, activity. However, there was also a slowdown in uh, domestic orders. So uh, domestic demand is also uh, somewhat more constrained. Uh, and that's also, in a sense, uh, pulling down uh, the overall, uh, should we say, activity readings uh, in the short term. Uh, Another thing that's uh, somewhat worrying and when you look at the numbers for, for, for August was that uh, inventories uh, build up uh, at the same time that you have a contraction in demand. So that suggests that uh, output would also be uh, facing headwinds uh, going ahead in the manufacturing sector. Uh, so, so growth is, is certainly uh, somewhat more moderate than, than expected uh, in China at the moment. So there really is a need to, to step it up when it comes to uh, macro uh, policy easing. Leif, you know, the financial markets have been hearing about a fiscal stimulus from China for a while now. Nothing concrete has really materialized except for some investment proposals. If this slowdown in manufacturing is confirmed, do you believe Beijing will be prompted to act on the fiscal front right now? I think that uh, there will be uh, both, should we say, more uh, monetary easing and also, I would say, broader, should we say, fiscal uh, easing as well coming out. Uh, starting first with monetary policy, we think that during the second half of, of 2000. Uh, and 12, we could uh, get an additional 200 basis points in triple R cuts. Uh, and and uh, the first round or the first salvo on that front could come within uh, a matter of weeks, uh, in our view. Uh, we also believe that they're likely to cut uh, monetary policy rate. Uh, we have 25 basis points uh, built in. In addition to that, as you alluded to, 
fiscal policy will also have to play a, a larger role in, in bringing uh, back growth up in the second half of the year. So we do expect uh, a number of measures on that front. Uh, of course, existing uh, measures uh, in place for, for should we say, uh, capital investments, uh, infrastructure-related projects that were planned in outer years uh, are likely going to be moved forward. <clears throat> there could be more, should we say, uh, impetus to uh, some, should we say, regions uh, also stepping up uh, spending on that front. So, so fiscal policy, both I think at the central level and then at the local government level or the uh, local level, would also have to to, to contribute uh, to to beefing up growth in the second half of uh, the year. The good news is that uh, China does have the room uh, to ease uh, monetary and fiscal policy. Inflation readings have been quite tame, about half the level of the central bank's target. So there's move a lot of room on that front. Uh, in terms of the fiscal position, uh, China's fiscal position is quite strong. They have uh, low levels of uh, central government debt to GDP ratio. That also affords some room to uh, ease policies on that front. And that should help facilitate a recovery during the second half of this year, probably more so toward the final quarter of, of 2012. Leif, I just want to push the point about the monetary easing that you mentioned. Uh, we've seen two cuts, uh, both on uh, the triple R and the lending rates. Let's just pull up what the governor said. The governor of the, of the, the central bank governor in China actually says that he does he is not ruling out a cut in lending rates, and those adjustments to interest rates and bank reserve re requirements are quite possible. By when are you expecting a cut in rates and cut in CRR uh, in our in the triple R? We think that you could uh, see um, both a cut in the triple R as well as in the lending rates uh, during the, the third quarter. Uh, so we, we are currently in the, in the third quarter, so that could come uh, relatively soon. Uh, we think that triple R cuts could potentially come uh, in a matter of, of weeks, essentially, uh, on the back of this, um, uh, should we say, somewhat slow readings as well. So that's, that's sort of the time frame we're looking at. And as I said, also additional easing uh, likely coming through uh, in the fourth quarter. If you know, you know, when you look at the data points that are emanating out of China, they are looking bleak. FDI investments have fallen. Exports collapsed to 1% in July compared to 11.8% in June. Um, in fact, let's, let's bring up what uh, uh, someone from the Bank of Japan said, and this was a comment on China, uh, that China is in fact maybe entering a, a danger zone. Um, you know, that's, that, that's the word coming in from the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Japan. Uh, would you agree, Leif, or is this a bit exaggerated? Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, in, in the short term, what I would say is that, you know, growth is certainly more uh, moderate than expected. Um, we still, I would say, generally speaking, uh, looking for uh, a soft landing in China, growth in the neighborhood of uh, 8% uh, this year. Of course, that 8% uh, uh, neighborhood of, of growth rate uh, assumes that monetary policy and fiscal policy easing will be stepped up in, in, the, in the very near term. Uh, so that can help, uh, should we say, facilitate, if you will, a soft landing in China. So that's still the, the baseline case we have uh, for China uh, in the short term. One final question, Leif. You know, China may not be facing a high inflation problem or as high an inflation problem as India, but rising property prices have, uh, they have risen quite sharply. How has it made the task difficult and complicated for Beijing? Well, in, in some sense, it, it limits, you can say, the scope <clears throat> for, for both uh, for monetary easing in some ways as well. They still have to re retain, I would say, relatively, as you would say, tight measures in place that can contain, uh, should we say, uh, house prices, that can contain <clears throat> credit growth going into to the property markets, and then focus instead on, on easing, uh, should we say, conditions in other parts uh, of the economy. So they will still keep a, uh, I would say, close watch on, on, should we say, the property sector. They want to still avoid uh, having, should we say, a disorderly uh, deflation of, of, uh, of housing prices there at the same time, but they also don't want to uh, ease up conditions there too early uh, and, and therefore overextend uh, property prices. So I think for now, uh, on that front, they want to keep uh, things uh, relatively tight and, as I said, uh, try to focus on easing other parts of the economy. Leif Eskerson, we leave with them. Many thanks for joining us with your perspective. That was Leif Eskerson from HSBC from Singapore.